Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Got a tropical update for you. Matter of fact, Tropical Storm Nicholas has shifted not only the cone and the impacts, the track has changed some. And if you take a good look at it, you can see how it did a zig and a zag right before Florida. And then that, now it's starting to head north. If you take a real good look, you can see right at the 850 millibar level where your closed low is. And you can see that the surface low is changing over a little more to the west. And it's trying to get the thunderstorms underneath the center eye right there. And as soon as it does, I mean, it's all lopsided because of the shear that is going through. But as soon as it gets all the thunderstorms underneath the eye right there, it's going to get really strong and start intensifying towards the coast. And it could be on the edge of a hurricane, high-end tropical storm. Never been here before. Hello, my name is Mark. I do upload every single day. Just not Friday from sundown until sundown Saturday. That is Sabbath. But we'll make sure you're covered. Matter of fact, this is my second update video for today, just to make sure everybody has the updated information before everything gets impacted on Texas. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, because I am all year long. All I ask is if you know somebody in these impacts, please share this video on social media, or just hit the like button. YouTube will suggest it for you. That way, the most people can get the updated information of what's going on, because the track is all different from this morning. Power outages are starting to add up as well. Michigan has 11,000 because you have a lot of storms up in the Midwest. I've been hearing thunderstorms all morning. It was pretty loud. Texas is over 11,000 now. And Louisiana, you're a little over 100,000 with your power. Matter of fact, Louisiana, I have some information for you because now your governor has declared some things because of what's going on now. Now, Governor John Edwards has declared a state of emergency for Louisiana in, in advance of the tropical storm. And that's because he knows it's bringing heavy rains and some flash flooding to the state in the coming days. And what they're dealing with, they really need some more help. Now, there is a severe weather for today going all across the Midwest all the way to the Northeast. But for Tropical Storm Nicholas, your tornadoes has gone up. You do have the 2% up here in Minnesota and Wisconsin, but your, your 2% went up to 5% over Texas. And here's your cities that are impacted by the 2% and the 5% for today. Also for tomorrow, we have a big crazy area of 2% for tornadoes for tomorrow. But you still have the 2% for tomorrow for Texas and it does go into Louisiana. And here's your cities and states of the 2% tornadoes for tomorrow. As of right now, Tropical Storm Nicholas is moving north now. Not, not northwest anymore, it's moving straight north, 12 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour winds still and it is going to start strengthening and we still have that disturbance off the southeast of the u.s still at 50 percent matter of fact i'm still showing that's not a threat guys and we have the one off the coast of africa that's actually going to 80 percent in the next five days 30 percent in 48 hours and that's the one i'm still showing will take that northward path and most of the ensembles show it'll go north in atlantic there is one or two that shows it'll go to the southeast i will update that in the morning as well and the new track takes it a little more to the west. It still stays as tropical storm and a tropical depression as it goes by Houston into Louisiana. But it has shifted a little bit to the west, a little closer inland because it's doing that eye wall replacement that I showed you. Now you can see all the winds coming off this upper level low is still hitting the west side of tropical storm Nicholas. And I'm still showing that as this upper level low moves more to the west, these winds are going to shift from west to east and it's still going to get a lot of wind shear as it comes on land storm surge has updated you're not two to four feet no more down here by southern texas you're one to three feet you're still two to four feet from baffin bay all the way towards port o'connor then it's three to five feet like it was earlier two to four feet like it was earlier by galveston bay and rutherford beach and intracoastal city by louisiana you're still one to three feet Rainfall amounts has come down. The red 10 to 15 inches that was over here has gone away. And the one right here has gone away as well. We only have a little area right here. But all your rainfall amounts is 1 to 2 inches in the light green, 2 to 4 inches in the dark green, 4 to 6 inches in this yellow, 6 to 10 inches in this orange. And this little area that we have left now is 10 to 15 inches. So it is lightening up. And your flash flooding risk has gone up. It has extended all the way past Louisiana. We even got a slight and a marginal risk for Mississippi and Alabama as well, even southern Arkansas. So through tomorrow morning, you have your marginal in this green. You have your slight risk in this yellow. You have your moderate in the red. And we have that high risk right here in this pink. Through Wednesday morning, you have your marginal in the green. You have your slight risk in the yellow. And your moderate risk right here in this red extending out into Louisiana. Then through Thursday morning, you have the marginal in all this green, 
slight risk in all this yellow from Texas all the way to Mississippi, and you have a big area of moderate risk for flash flooding. And tropical storm force winds of at least 39 miles per hour sustained winds. You have 80% chance in this red, 70, 60, 50, 40, and then all the way to 10% in this green right here. 60 miles per hour winds, you have a 40% chance right here on this yellow, but you can see how most of it is starting to stay in the Gulf now. Now you got a 30% chance, 20 and 10% chance in this green for 60 miles per hour winds. And hurricane force winds is still in the Gulf. They're going to keep the hurricane watch just in case because hurricane winds will be possible at the very last second. However, wind shear will knock this storm down. And when you go to check the wind gusts of what's going on according to the Euro just in the next 24 hours, this is a big wind field of wind gusts that there's going to be. It's going to be 50 miles per hour wind gusts all the way from Corpus Christi all the way to Victoria. And there is a high amount right before landfall of 76 miles per hour wind gusts according to the Euro. And as you go from 24 hours to three days, now it's going to go all over Texas. Houston, you have 50 to 60 miles per hour wind gusts still all the way to Columbus. Cleveland, 50. Beaumont, you're in the 40s. And Alexandria, you're in the 40s. And that's all the way from four to five days out. And you even got another spot in Louisiana that could get 50 miles per hour wind gusts. So you got to be careful of it because it is coming your way from day three to five. As a matter of fact, the days are a little different according to Euro and GFS. Now in the next 12 hours, Euro shows that there is no rainfall, but in the next 24 hours, it's gonna start coming on land. And so far it has it somewhere by Victoria, coming by Corpus Christi with all the, the rain being east side loaded. And then the next three days, it's gonna come on land and affect everybody from Texas to Louisiana. Lake Jackson, Houston, over six inches. Beaumont, you're in a little sweet spot where you're going to get two to three inches according to the Euro so far. Alexandria is still going to get over seven inches. And Lufkin is the big hot spot according to the Euro, over 12 inches. Then as you go from three days to five days, then it's going to extend across Louisiana and get into Mississippi. We saw this earlier. It's still showing that. Matter of fact, they have the flash flooding now from NOAA. So NOAA is definitely going by this. Uh, GFS shows it just shoots north. But so far you have Hattiesburg and Macomb, almost six inches of rainfall in Jackson, four inches. And that's from day three to day five. It's, it's within two days. Now the GFS shows in 12 hours is your wind gust. That's going to be coming over Victoria, Corpus Christi, Lake Jackson. A little bit milder than in Euro. It's not showing 40s and 50s. It's showing 35s and 40s. But when you get to the next 24 hours, then everything's going to start coming on land. And it's showing it's still going to Houston with 50 miles per hour wind gusts. Lake Jackson still getting 50. And as you go to three days, it don't stretch out too much further. GFS shows that as it turns, the wind shear just kills the storm, takes away all the strength from it. And y'all lucky over here if y'all get 30 miles per hour wind gusts within the next three to five days. It's just not a lot going on. GFS is just showing the impact is right here. And you can see that with the rainfall amounts. Just the first 24 hours, GFS is saying that Houston will be and a little bit less than five inches of rainfall. Lake Jackson over five inches with Beaumont getting almost three inches. And then when you go to three days, it turns a little bit towards Louisiana. Their rainfall for Texas don't get any heavier. Lafayette three inches, Alexandria three inches. Everybody else getting light. It shoots north according to the GFS. Very light amounts according to the GFS. It, it goes north, it gets pulled a little bit by the storm that's going on in Ohio Valley and it pulls it north. Euro shows that it stays on the eastern path and just puts heavy rainfall. And when you go to look at the rainfall, according to the Euro for the whole run, as it comes all the way through Texas, goes through Louisiana, and affects Mississippi as well. Go to the last run, and there's the heaviness. According to the Euro, it does that sharp turn. You get that very heavy spot in eastern Texas. You get some close to Alexandria, and it lightens up as it goes down, but it's still very heavy rainfall. According to the Euro. According to the GFS, it's not as heavy as the Euro is showing. It's, con it's agreeing with the turn going towards Louisiana, but it takes a northward push with all the rainfall rates. It still shows heavy rainfall, but it's pretty much almost half of what the Euro is showing once it passes Houston. And it shows very light amounts for Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. And so far, the latest guidance does take it in 24 hours coming on land on Texas and curving and going towards Louisiana within 48 hours and actually will be gone in three days. And it also shows all the latents 
intensity guidances, only one takes it up to 60 knot winds, which is 70 miles per hour, and that's why they have it at 70. The rest of them show very weak. Most of them show it's going to be anywhere from 45 to 55 knot winds, which makes, which makes it 50 to 60 miles per hour winds right before landfall, and then weakening down very quickly. No hurricane. And the models are a little bit in agreement on intensity. The Euro takes it as a 998 when it comes in, and then as it goes towards eastern Texas six hours later, it drops it down to a 1,000. And then you can see how it's upper level low and carries the energy over to Louisiana and Mississippi. The GFS also takes it down to a 998, and you see how it downgrades quickly down to 1,000 millibars, upper level low, going over Louisiana and Mississippi. Very weak system after that. And you can see here with the steering winds, how it's bringing it from the south to the north. So the system is going to take that northward push. But as it gets closer, it's as strong as it gets to 994, because now the upper level low moved to the west. And these winds at 250 millibar level is steering it from west to east. So there's going to be a lot of shear on this system. And you can see the next shot, it goes down from 994 to 999, and then it's just 1003 and gone. Shear is going to be very strong on it. So if you look at the wind shear right here, you can see it as it heads north and goes towards Texas. It has a little weak area of just slight wind shear. That's why it's able to upgrade to a 994. But as soon as it gets on land, the steering winds kick in. The wind shear gets strong, knocks it down. Very moderate to heavy wind shear right there. And then it gets, stays heavy as it goes towards eastern Texas and totally kills that storm. And you can see all the storms are east side loaded. And as it goes on Texas and gets that shear, it does get some of the dry air pushed into the core of that system. And that's what kills it so fast. Done. When we look at the spaghetti models for the disturbance right over the southeast of the U.S., you can see in four days, according to the Euro, something does pop up. But it's always showed that it's going to go east, northeast, and not be a problem for anybody. It's always been the scenario. You look for a tropical depression just to try and track that storm off the southeast. And you can see in three to four days, it has maybe a 40% chance to 45 of being a tropical depression. And that's it. Close as it gets is right there by North Carolina. That's why I said the other day, maybe North Carolina might get some rain out of this. But in five days, it'll start moving and going away from the U.S. And that's the latest information on the storm and the intensity and the tracking impacts, guys. So please, if you do use social media, help share this information. Let people know the track has changed. That means the cone has changed as well as, well as the impacts. They're almost the same. They're just a little bit more to the western, which means it's going to drag way more and go into Louisiana and Mississippi. So please help share the information before Louisiana and Mississippi didn't think they was getting too much of it. And now it looks like it's definitely turning their way. Not really for the winds, but a lot of the rain. And that's a lot of area. I don't need any more flooding. I hope you all have a very blessed day today. God bless every single one of you. I did notice power did go out uh, in Texas. A little over 10,000 homes a while back. Then it went back to 6. Now it's back at 11 again. So they are on it pretty quickly. So that's a good thing. Let me speak a word of our Father tonight. God bless you all and keep you all safe and your families. Psalm 138. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. In the day when I cried, thou answeredest me and strengthened me with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. Yes, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Amen. 
Have a great day today, guys. Do the best you can with this. I do wish the best for every single one of you. All glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, the Almighty. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Praise the Lord. Be safe.